What's going on everybody, C4 here. Today we're continuing with my Madden 19, Madden 18 release schedule. And we're finishing up with the NFC South. So apologies if you're an NFC South fan and you've been craving to find out what your team's ratings are. Uh, but yeah, these are my Madden community rosters. They were well received last year, so we're doing them now. So if you want a full explanation of what you're going to find in these rosters, go check out the AFC East video, which was the first uh, that I released. If not, hopefully my lazy ass... Put a quick Cliff Notes version in the video description. Uh, essentially, though, the only quick thing you need to know is some of your rookies' overalls may not be... Uh, rookie ages, sorry. The rookie ages may not line up with exactly what they are. So once you pop into your franchise mode, you can easily adjust that. So today, starting in the south, we're going to start with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Where it's tough, man. They're one of the tougher teams to grade because they are a great team on paper and definitely under succeeded with 5-11. and 11. Uh, So we gave Jameis Winston an 80 overall last season, 3-10. and 10. As a starter, 3,500 yards, 19 TDs to 11 interceptions. Very much like Marcus Mariota. These are two guys that, like, you see the potential. You see the flashes of, like, this guy here is going to be, you know, a franchise quarterback. And then you also see, like, well, how come he hasn't developed? He still, You know, you still see the issues that they struggled with in college. And that's still the issue with James Winston. Uh, I don't know if Dirk Cutter is the guy long-term there. Uh, but, I mean, he still is a solid quarterback. And ultimately, he's going to be 24 years old going into next season. That's still plenty of time for him to develop uh, into what he could be. At the running back spot, we have Rojo, Ronald Jones the second, selected at USC. We gave him a 76 overall. He is going to be the, the uh, starter there for all you fantasy football fans out there. He's a guy that I certainly look at targeting. Uh, they get you Quiz Rogers, Peyton Barber there as well at the running back core, but let's be honest, Ronald Jones is going to be the feature back there. Uh, we have fullbacks. At the wide receiver spot, we gave Mike Evans an 88 overall. Uh, he's one of my favorite wide receivers in the NFL last season with inconsistent quarterback play, to say the least. This was 71 catches, 1,000 yards and five TDs, so this is more so uh, a regression. I think I had him as a 90, 91 last season, so now falling out down to an 88. That's where he'll start out at. Uh, we get Deshaun Jackson in 83 overall last year. Deshaun Jackson, 50 catches, 700 yards, three TDs. Uh, still is one of the better deep threats, but again, you know, everyone on that Bucks offense was kind of underperformed last season. Uh, Humphreys with a 78. Godwin, the rookie, going into his sophomore season with a 77. Tight ends, Cam Brate is getting an 82 overall last season. Cam Brate finished with 600 yards and 6 TDs, whereas rookie O.J. Howard, we're giving him a 78 overall. He finished with 400 yards, 6 TDs. So this is a really good two-headed tight end set that they can run. Two good weapons. Uh, and I believe they recently just re-signed Brate, so it looks like they're they're confident going with these two guys in the future. Offensive line, Donald Smith, 72, one of the worst starting tackles in the league. Ali Marpet, left guard, 80. They got Ryan Jensen. They paid big-time money from the Baltimore Ravens. He's a 78. Uh, Evan Smith, Sweezy, 73. Uh, Demire Dotson, 85. Overall, still not the strongest of offensive lines. On the other side, they got JPP in a trade. Uh, that's a nice get, man. He's still a guy that even though he, you know, he only has like three fingers on one hand, he can still get lots of pressure after the quarterback. Uh, he's an 82. You still got Noah Spence, who has some upside. Uh, defense, yeah, Vinny Curry coming by Philadelphia Eagles. I'll tell you guys right now, grades out well for pro football focus. Really good against the run. Frustrating against the pass. He's one of those guys that when he gets the quarterback out in open space, he turns to Bambi on ice. No matter what he does, he just doesn't come down with the sack for whatever reason. But he still is a really, really solid edge rusher. Um, yeah, Unran here coming over from the Bears. He's solid. D tackle, Jerry McCoy, 92 overall. Uh, Jerry McCoy is real nice. He's been probably the face of the defense for a little bit. He made the Pro Bowl last year. Six sacks. I uh, love the team in sacks. Uh, just shy of 50 total tackles. Again, Vita Vea in the first round. He's a 78. I probably would. He could low-key get that superstar dev trait. He's real nice. Uh, you got Bo Allen coming from the Eagles. I can tell you right now, really solid against the run. Doesn't offer much outside of that, but good against the run. Uh, you got Kendall Beckwith starting an outside linebacker. He's a 73. Decent season as a rookie. I think he had 60 solo tackles. Uh, you know, yeah, he's, he's a work in progress. Middle linebacker Quan Alexander gave him an 84 overall. Made the Pro Bowl last year. Had three picks. Had four pass deflections, uh, just shy of 100 total tackles. He's the guy that constantly gets like, like I think his base when I started these rosters was like a 76 or 77. I don't know why Madden every year constantly underrates him. Uh, for my money, he's one of the better inside linebackers in football. And then you have Levante David, 94 overall. I think he's either the highest or the second highest right outside linebacker uh, in my save. Uh, last season, Levante David didn't get any recognition whatsoever, but grayed out insanely well from Pro Football Focus. Had five forced fumbles, over 100 total tackles, and really was... <laughs> I, I probably kept them in a lot more games than they should have been able to be either competitive in or won. Uh, the secondary is old. Looking at Brent Grimes because he's pretty much the most talented guy in the secondary, and he's going to be 35, but he still had three picks last year, 11 pass deflections. Uh, you have Hargraves, who hopefully, uh, you know, Gator Bias can turn it around. 
MJ Stewart, they selected him. Carlton Davis, they selected him, 73 and 72, respectively. Uh, free safety, they got Chris Conti, 75. They got Justin Evans, maybe he can take uh, a big leap here next season. Uh, might be the starter. Uh, strong safety, Godwin Igwe Buke, who they got as an undrafted free agent. I rated him higher than most, and that's why I have him currently starting here for them. He's a really solid player, tested incredibly well at the Combine, a lot better than a lot of people expected. Kicker is Catton 76, and Brian Egger, the punter, 81. So those are the Bucks. If you agree or disagree with any of the rates you saw, let me know. Next up is the Atlanta Falcons, where we gave Matt Ryan a 90 overall. Um, last year definitely didn't live up the MVP billing, but we're not going to nuke his rating. I think I gave him a 94 last year after he won the MVP, so a four-point downgrade. Uh, finished with 4,100 yards, 20 TDs to 12 interceptions. You know, wasn't anything special. Pretty much was the Matt Ryan we kind of expected. Close to, like, that's, it's the, uh, the Shanahan effect, or maybe it was just an outlier year. He's slightly better than the stats I think he put up last year, but not too, too much. He's always going to be a guy that's, that's probably hovering around 30 touchdowns. Uh, and double-digit interceptions. But I think a 90 is a fair starting point here for Matt Ryan. Devontae Freeman, we gave him an 89 overall last year. Had just shy of 1,200 yards from scrimmage and eight total touchdowns. Uh, he's a beast, man. He's really, really good for a guy that's that small, runs incredibly powerful. They got Tevin Coleman, probably the last year he's going to be on the roster. He had 900 yards from scrimmage and eight TDs as well. Pro I don't think there's a better two-headed running back attack uh, in football. Maybe you can look at Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara. I think Mark Ingram actually today po tested positive for some illegal substances. But uh, these guys here, like those are the two premier running back tandems you'd have to say. Unless I'm drastically missing someone, which I don't think I am uh, in the league right now. And they just happen to be in the same division. If Derek Coleman, who was terrible against the Eagles in the playoffs. Uh, why was here we give Julio Jones a 97? Now, I don't think this is too controversial, but maybe there's some people out there that definitely think he gets a 99. Uh, 88 catches. 1,400 yards last year, but only three touchdowns. Everyone knows Julio doesn't score touchdowns. It's about time someone holds him accountable for that. He has got to be the only 6'3", 220-pound wide receiver that either gets no looks in the red zone, can't finish it in the red zone. I don't know what it is. He's still absolutely unstoppable most weeks, so we're still giving him a 97. Uh, but there might be some... I might catch some flack for that one. Uh, Sanu is getting an 81. He finished last year with 700 yards, 5 TDs. Solid slot guy. Calvin Ridley was their first round pick out of Alabama. I love that move. He's a 78. I think now you can go Ridley and Jones on the outside with Sanu and Justin Hardy trying to get snaps in the slot. Uh, it really, you know, kind of completes the offense. And I think it's uh, I think long term Calvin Ridley is an upgrade over Taylor Gabriel. You got Hardy and a couple other dudes there. Tight end Esther Hooper is getting an 82 overall last season. Hooper finished with 500 yards, three TDs on 50 catches. So that's you know that's about a low 80s. I feel like. Uh, left tackle Jake Matthews, again, most of these grades are pretty much in line with pro football focus. So he got an 80, Levitri with an 81, center Alex Mack with a 90. I think he's the third or fourth highest center in my rosters. Uh, Fusco coming over from, I think, I want to say the 49ers. It might have been the Vikings, one of the two. Uh, he's just he's just solid. Uh, they get Ryan Schrader here with an 81. Look at the defensive side. We gave Vic Beasley an 83 overall. Now this is something like, Vic Beasley, how do they use him? I don't watch enough of the... Falcons, but he's clearly an end, right? He's not an outside linebacker, but is he a linebacker? Does he does he play both? I don't know. But he finished five sacks last year. Uh, definitely a down year, but you know, understanding that he was like the sack leader a year before, kind of downgrades him down to an 83. Uh, you have Tack McKinley here, who got six sacks last year, was second on the team as a rotational guy. So I assume you'd go Vic Beasley on one side, Tack on the other. Even though we have Brooks Reed here. I feel like that's probably how you line up. I don't know. Especially with Adrian Claiborne gone, a uh, spot open up at DN. So maybe that's why if he was playing linebacker Vic Beasley, now with no Claiborne, maybe you have him go there. Don't know. Falcon fans, let me know. Uh, D-tackle, Grady Jarrett gets an 86 overall. This guy is incredibly solid as a D-tackle. Four sacks last year, 50-some tackles. Uh, I feel like 86 is fair. Higher than a lot. If you don't really pay attention to football, you probably don't know who he is. But he went off in the Super Bowl and was really, really solid all last season. Uh, we got Duke Riley here. He's 68. Deion Jones, we gave him an 88 last season. Deion Jones made the Pro Bowl, finished with three picks, 10 pass deflections, and almost 140 total tackles. This guy's an absolute stud at middle linebacker. Right outside linebacker, Devondre Campbell, he has an 82 overall. Last season, he had four pass deflections, two sacks, and 92 total tackles. Looking at the secondary, Dez Trufant is getting an 88. Pretty underrated corner. Uh, last season was second on the team in interceptions with two picks, had 12 pass deflections, and just shy of 40 total tackles. So I, I think like 88's a good spot. I, th I think 86 would have been too low. 87, I might feel a little better him at 87 than 88. Uh, but I remember last year when I did the Falcons roster, this was the saltiest reception I got of anyone. All the Falcon fans hated the writings, said everyone should have got a 99. 
Uh, so yeah, we, I figured let's just give them something here with True Font with an 88. Uh, we give Alfred an 81, Brian Poole 78, Isaiah Oliver second round pick, excellent value. He will start out as a 75. Uh, free safety Ricardo Allen is getting an 80. Strong safety Keanu Neal is getting an 87. Keanu Neal being the Pro Bowl last year, one interception, six pass deflections, three forced fumbles, over 100 total tackles. He's you know if Cam Chancellor does decide to retire, here is his regen. Here is the guy that's taken over that enforcer role around the league, the reputation of being the big time hitter. Uh, Matt Bryant's getting 84. Matt Bosher, 82. Good special teams for the Falcons. With the Carolina Panthers, we get Cam Newton, 85 overall. Last season, Cam Newton, a little bit better than the year before. 11-5 and five as a starter, 3,300 yards, 22 TDs, 16 picks. Uh, I think he also had 700 yards on the ground and six rushing touchdowns. So, you know, almost 30 total touchdowns on the year, 4,000 total yards. 85 is a good spot. I mean, as a passer, he is somewhat limited. He's one of those guys we saw a prime example against the Eagles. That's a game, full game I watched. Probably the only full game I watched of the Panthers last year. And if you need Cam Newton to throw the ball for like more than 30 times, his accuracy struggles immensely. Uh, but still, on his day, he can just be the most electrifying player in the league. So I think 85 is a good starting point here for Cam Newton. It's along the lines of, you know, it's in that, you know, Phillip Rivers, Matt Stafford-ish territory. And that's a good starting point for him. Uh, running back C.J. Anderson recently signed. Now, I've had a couple videos where I've had, like, a couple guys that got traded or get released. I was on top of the ball on this one, double-checking. C.J. Anderson, I really, really love that move. I think C.J. Anderson in and as a pairing with Christian McCaffrey is really, really good. Maybe not as good as, obviously, the Camaras and the Mark Ingram type tandems or the Tevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman, but this is pretty damn good and stacks up well against the league. C.J. Anderson coming off 1,000 yards. Christian McCaffrey last year had 1,000, almost 1,100 yards from scrimmage and seven total TDs. So that's a really nice backfield now there with Cam Newton as well. Um, at the wide receiver saw Devin Funches is getting an 82 overall last year. 84, uh, 840 yards, 8 TDs on 60 catches. So he's emerging, and it looks like long-term they are you know further ahead by going with him and progressing with him as their number one and not Calvin Benjamin. Uh, you got Torrey Smith in the trade for the Eagles. Reality, last year he was not very good throughout the regular season. Had a lot of drops, but he did come up clutch throughout our playoff run. And was really, 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 really reliable there. And you know he brings some speed. So that was a good pick. We got DJ Moore in the first round. He's getting a 77. I love that pick. I think he might have one of the highest ceilings out of any of the wide receivers that was taken in the first round. He's going to make an immediate impact. You got right here. You got Curtis Samuel. We got a couple other guys. But still, I mean, not the most refined wide receiver core. But there is a lot more upside this year than there was, say, last season. Greg Olson at tight end. He's getting a 90 overall. G-Reg with that third leg. He's awesome. As long as he stays healthy. Struggled to stay healthy last year. Only seven games. Uh, 200 yards and a TD, but when he is healthy, he is a legitimate top five tight end. Uh, they also drafted, I wanted to put him in, but I didn't have enough roster spots. Um, Ian Thomas from Indiana, he's a nice little pickup there at tight end. Offensive line, you got Matt Khalil, 72. Taylor Moten taking over for Norwell, 70. Uh, Ryan Khalil, 76. Trey Turner's 80. And you got Darrell Williams, 85. So the right hand side of this line is pretty good, but anytime you lose Andrew Norwell, debatably, you know, one of the top five guards in football. Uh, and you don't immediately replace him. It's got a sting, but I think Moten will be serviceable and does have a lot of upside there. Uh, Chuck it on the defensive side. Julius Peppers is getting an 86 overall. The ages wonder himself was tied for first on the team in sacks last year with 11. Uh, awesome, man. One of my favorite players of all time. Even though I'm not a Panthers fan, when I was in my video game history, Julius Peppers on the Panthers defense, especially back in 2K5, is, is probably the most overpowered thing I've seen since I've been playing uh, football video games. And I love that he's still doing well. Right defensive end, Mario Addison got 11 sacks last year as well. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of bias in the discrepancy there, but I, I know it could be 84, could be 85. 11 sacks is pretty productive, but I feel like the fact that Addison started every game versus Julius Peppers getting those numbers while he's pretty much rotational, I'm giving it to Peppers. The edge in overall. Uh, K1 Short's getting a 90 overall. Really nice D tackle. Seven and a half sacks last year, two forced fumbles. Uh, just shy of 50 total tackles, so definitely warrants that 90. Don Terry Poe coming over as a free agent from the Falcons. Was really solid for the Falcons last year, so that's a nice little tandem. I guess they're giving up on Verdon Butler already uh, by giving that much money to Poe. Uh, Shaq Thompson's getting an 82 overall. Last season, Shaq Thompson had uh, 14 starts, 2 sacks, 57 tackles. So he's still a work in progress. you got to remember, converted safety, play a lot of offense at Washington, so he's still really uh, getting everything down packed for the linebacking role, and you see flashes of a super athletic uh, ball hawk. Luke Kuechly's getting a 97 overall, which is tied for first with Bobby Wagner. Uh, this is just because, you know, he has struggled to stay on the field, it feels like. Uh, played 15 starts last year, but it seemed like, you know, a couple games, concussions, and he wasn't 100% in all the games. But at full strength, he is the best linebacker in football. Three interceptions last year, four pass deflections, a sack and a half, 120-some tackles. First team all pro. He's absolute money, man. Uh, so, yeah, we're giving him a 97. 
Uh, Thomas Davis is getting 85, even though it looks like he tested. He popped for some bad, bad stuff. Still made the Pro Bowl last year. Two and a half sacks. Uh, just shy of 80 total tackles. Uh, so that's 85. Secondary is definitely a work in progress. You got Bradbury here, 77. I think last year he had two interceptions, 10 pass deflections, was second on the team in tackles, but he's just solid. You got Ross Cockrell coming over from the Giants. Dante Jackson, speedster out of LSU, was a nice pickup, but still definitely a lot of questions over the secondary heading into next season. Free safety, ugh, Colin Jones. Strong safety, old man Mike Adams, 81. Uh, we got, I think he had two picks as well last year. Graham Gano was the, debatably the best kicker in the league. He's the second best kicker by one point. Justin Tucker's a 91, Gano's a 90. And uh, Michael Plarty at punter here at 78. Lastly, we'll be finishing up with the New Orleans Saints, who I, I would say they have one of the most overpowered rosters, and they will have one of the most overpowered rosters when you pop into next year's Madden 19. Drew Brees is getting a 90 overall after having 4,300 passing yards, 28 TDs to 18, or 8 interceptions. Didn't throw it as much, didn't have as much passing touchdowns. It seems like a season that Brees doesn't throw for 30 TDs. He might have got hurt or something like that. Uh, but the fact that he's 11-5 and five as a starter, and really it was more so the game plan. He pretty much executed every time he needed to. I think it would be too hard to have Drew Brees fall out of the 90s. So I think, I think at 90 is pretty close to where he should be. Alvin Kamara is getting an 89 overall. Super electrifying player. Rotational guy didn't only got three starts all season, but was in you know obviously the heavy rotation with Mark Ingram. Uh, 1500 yards from scrimmage and 13 total touchdowns. He won the offensive rookie of the year. So there you go, Mark Ingram. 1500 yards from scrimmage, 12 total TDs. However, tested positive for some illegal substances, which is you know a big big time no no. I'm glad that I have Alvin Kamara as a keeper in my fantasy league, as well as Kareem Hunt. I'm money. I'm dominating. Uh, but that is a you know that is probably overall the best two at a running back attack in football. He has Zach Lund here, fullbacks in 80. Well, obviously, we get Michael Thomas, a 90 overall. He's like that guy who's right on the cusp of being the next big superstar wide receiver, I think. And the fact that he's 24, uh, got you know the whole world ahead of him. Last year, 104 catches, 1,200 yards, 5 TDs, 90 all damn day. Uh, Ted Ginn, 83, still serviceable, deep threat, 800 yards, 4 TDs. Yeah, Cam Meredith here coming over from the Bears. Missed all last season, but the year before that, he was looking like a guy that, you know, might have been able to pick up the slack from Alshon Jeffrey. He's a guy that probably could get you 1,000 yards, maybe fringe 1,000-yard type rate wide receiver. I like that pick up there. If he is, if he is 100% healthy, uh, Coleman, 77, and a couple other guys. I got Traquan Smith, their third-round draft pick here at a UCF with a 70. The tight end spot we have, Kobe Fleener actually got released today. So Ben Watson, they're going with old, the old stack here. Ben Watson's getting 81. I think last season he was with the Ravens. I don't know his stats, but, you know, he still is really solid. Josh Hill's pretty solid as well. Oh, it's a line. Taron Armstead's getting an 86. Andres Pete, 73. Max Unger, 81. Larry Warford, 80. And Ryan Ramchick going into a sophomore season, starting out with an 84 overall. On the defense side, we give Cam Jordan a 94 overall. I think he is our second best defensive end. Second or third best right defensive end. Last season was first team all pro. Had an interception, two forced fumbles, 13 sacks. He's an animal. Absolute animal. Uh, Alex Okafor here is getting an 82. They got Davenport, which I still can't believe they gave two first-round picks to get him. He's a 75 overall, though. Probably will get a quick dev trade. Uh, so, you know, they has that going for him. Uh, D-tackle, Sheldon Rankins, 81 overall. You got on on Yamada, Canadian, 79. Davidson, 75. Good youth there. Everyone's under 25 or will be 25 or under. So there's a lot of a lot of room to de develop and grow these guys. Other side linebacker, AJ Klein's getting a 72 overall. Last season had just shy, or just over 50 total tackles and two sacks. Uh, we have Demario Davis coming over as a free agent from the Jets. That was an excellent pickup. Graded up very well for Pro Football Focus. Had a bunch of stats. Uh, right outside linebacker, you have Alex Anzalone from my Florida Gators. I think Anzalone last year uh, only started in four games, had 20 tackles and a sack, but definitely has some upside if he can stay healthy. In the secondary, Marshawn Lattimore is getting an 89 overall, pretty much equal to his counterpart, Alvin Kamara, Offensive and Defensive Rookie of the Year. Last season, Marshawn Lattimore took the league by storm. Five picks, made the Pro Bowl as a rookie, 18 pass deflections, a forced fumble, and just over 50 total tackles. And he just, he kind of represents the change that the Saints defense was good last year and just not as, as utterly terrible as it was. You got Patrick Robinson coming over for the Philadelphia Eagles. He graded out as like a top 10 corner from Pro Football Focus in the league as a nickel. I will tell you right now, if you don't plan on using him as a nickel, he was not particularly strong on the outside. Uh, you got Ken Crawley here, 83 overall. Last season, Ken Crawley had interceptions, 17 pass deflections. So a whole lot there. I think P.J. Williams had two picks as well. So the secondary is looking pretty good. You got Marcus Williams, who I guess, you know, thinking about that playoff game against the Vikings aside, he's getting an 80 overall. Last season, he had four picks, seven pass deflections. And I think 
Uh, just over 70 total tackles. So maybe 80 could be a little bit higher. Uh, you have Von Bell here as well. Uh, you got Kirk Coleman coming over as a veteran signing from the Panthers. I think maybe you want to go Von Bell as strong. I don't know yet. Depth chart, Saints fans, let me know. Kicker, Will Lutz, one of the better kickers in the league, 84. And Thomas Moore said one of the better punters in the league within 83. So there you go. Those are the Saints. And overall, that is the NFC South ratings. If you agree or disagree with any of the ratings you saw today, let me know in the comment section below. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. This is the final video of me, you know, kind of making sure we're getting the ratings right. So expect sometime early next week. The, the video and the link and all that stuff will be popping up for you guys to go download the first version of our community rosters. Which again, if Madden 19 is utterly terrible, which it looks like it could be, I'll be updating these Madden 18 rosters. Because even though clearly I'll have to play Madden 19 on YouTube, I probably will you know still help out the Madden 18 community. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.